Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another Minecraft video and in this one we're going to take a look at how to build a secret laboratory. Now this is going to involve a bunch of really awesome redstone contraptions from hazmat applicators to security measures to various different piston doors all the way through to animal testing facilities. This thing has it all, okay? This has got everything the laboratory ever needs and I think it's going to be a really fun redstone build. So let's crack on. So as you can see right here, I've cleared out a bunch of space in our mountainside and that's to make way for all of the entrances and also all of the security systems that we're going to have to gain access to the laboratory itself. Now the entrance that we're actually going to be using is a 2x2 flush piston door, which is a relatively simple piston door. It's just constructed by placing in four sticky pistons like that, with two in this direction and blocks on their faces, then a two block wide gap, and then another set of two sticky pistons, and a 2x2 area like this with blocks on top of all of those. And then we're going to chuck redstone in on this side, redstone in the middle and redstone on that side with repeaters set to two ticks running in both directions. Now if I was to power this thing you can see that all of our pistons extend and they push out to all of the blocks like this which means it will be flush with the wall and if we take out that redstone torch all of them get retracted. It's absolutely perfect and it's incredibly simple. As I mentioned in the beginning, we are going to be building a security system for this thing and we're going to be running that into an RS null latch. So now it's time to build the RS null latch that is going to be powering this piston door, if that makes any sense. So you want to place a couple blocks going across the top here and then we're going to place a few blocks running across like this. On top of this block, you want to place a redstone torch with a block on top and then connect that block into the redstone line. You can see all of these pistons extend and they have pushed all of their blocks outwards, which is absolutely perfect. Now we're going to create an RS null latch, which means we need to run a comparator into this block then have a dropper facing upwards and a dropper running back down into that dropper to create our two-way RS null latch and we can just place any old item inside that dropper and that is all of that circuitry done. Now we need to build a card reader system that we can connect up to this thing. Next up we need to build the security key system itself. So we're going to place a block right here with a dropper running across like this, a hopper running back into it with a button on the back side of that dropper. Now that's going to be the activation button which is going to activate all of this redstone circuitry. Running out from this hopper, we want to place a comparator. That's going to be going out into a block with a redstone line running down like this into this block right here with a redstone torch on the side of it. Now that is going to create your key card system. I know it's an incredibly small little circuit, but inside this hopper, you want to place whatever item you want to be your key card. Now I, for example, am going to be using redstone, but you can use whatever items you really fancy. And if you really want to, to add an extra layer of security, you can actually rename those items, which means only people with those exact renamed items will be able to have access to your laboratory. It's extremely secure. But anyway, now what we have to do is run the output from this thing into our RS null latch. And we're going to do that by placing in this redstone. Since the previous clip, I've just done the tiniest, tiniest bit of decorating. I've extended out our tunnel, so it is now five blocks long. I've also got some sea lanterns. I've put some quartz in the walls, and I personally think everything is looking rather lovely. So now it's time to do some more redstone. The first thing we're going to do is chuck a button on this block right here. And as you can see, when we hit it, our doors will open up, which means that we can open up our doors when the security system is locked, which is a very good thing because otherwise, well, we'd probably be in here for a little while. But anyway, the next thing we want to do is actually create a locking mechanism which will shut the doors behind us when we come inside. And the way we're going to do that is by placing a button on top of this quartz block right here, then going up to the top and carrying out a line of blocks like this and placing redstone dust on top of all of those just like that. Now that will flip the RS Norach back over. It will send the item back down from this dropper into this dropper, which means that all of our doors will lock back up. So I think it's about time that we tested everything that we've built so far. So I'm just going to pop outside and that will open up the doors for us. And we're going to try out our security card reader system. So as you can see, I've chucked one item of redstone inside this thing. And of course that is our security key. When we hit that button, we should see all of our doors will open. So that seems to be working quite nicely. When we pop inside and hit this button, that will lock up all of our doors. And then when we hit this button, that will open the doors so that we can get out. Fantastic. Well, I've done everything perfectly so far, so I guess the first thing that you want to do is just name these buttons so you know exactly what you do, because if you come back to this in like three or four months time, you're probably going to have forgotten. For the final contraption in our little entrance area, we're going to be building something very small, but I think very awesome as well, and that is the hazmat suit applicator. So the way we're going to construct this is by taking out these two blocks right here and breaking a few more of them. You then want to place a dispenser facing upwards, a dispenser facing across like this, and then another dispenser facing downwards, on this dispenser you want to place a button and on this bottom dispenser you want to place some redstone dust. So that means that this button is going to power all four of our dispensers. Then the next thing you want to do is chuck a few items around like this and place in your gold armor around it and we're actually going to grab the legs and also the shoes down at the bottom there and we'll throw these in as well. And then inside each one of your dispensers you just want to right click on it and chuck in all of the items. So I'm going to place in all of the boots down at the bottom 
and then we're going to throw in all of the leggings in this one right here all of the chest plates in the top one and all of the helmets in the top top one if you get what i mean now that you've filled in all of the dispensers with the various different bits of armor you have got a working hazmat suit applicator so right now we're completely naked and we're not protected from all of the harmful chemicals that are going to be on the inside of our laboratory so what we have to do is pop inside hit the button and we're looking safe i mean that really does suit me doesn't it time to crack on with the laboratory itself now then, a whole bunch of things have happened since the previous clip. Number one, I've cleared out a massive area for our laboratory. This is going to be where the testing facility is going to be going. I've also cleared out this space down at the bottom here, which is going to make way for our two high piston door that is going to go right the way across the length of the entire laboratory itself. So that's going to be the entrance into the testing area itself. Now, as you can see, I've also done some decoration. So I've got one block on this side and all of the quartz and the iron blocks going around the top. And I've got some quartz on this side as well, which is four blocks wide. And then we've gone at three blocks in like this. And this is actually where our door is going to be going. So the first thing that I've got to do is go up to this block right here and place sticky pistons facing upwards going right the way across. Now, as I say, this is going to be a very big two high piston door and it's going to go right the way across the length of the laboratory, which means it's going to be fairly complicated in terms of redstone. We've got a little double piston extender action happening here, but it's going to be worth it because I personally think it's going to look awesome. But anyway, the next thing that we've got to do is place blocks going across the back here and then another line of those just like this. We're going to place redstone across the back, which is going to connect into all of our repeaters, which are going to be facing in this direction. And they are going to be running into our blocks, which are going to have redstone torches on the sides of them just like this. And we should see that the bottom pistons will extend. And then when we place the blocks on top of the torches, all of our top pistons will extend. So currently our double piston extender is fully extended. So far, we have got all of the rising edge circuitry done. Now we need to do the falling edge circuit, which is going to deal with the final block retraction. So you want to place a redstone torch on the side of this block, then a dropper facing in this direction, a hopper running back down into it with any old item inside that dropper. That's going to be your falling edge monostable circuit. Then you want to place a few blocks going across like this, a block up like that, a comparator taking output from this hopper, a repeater running into this block, and that's going to be going into this redstone line right here. So that is everything finished. That is your double piston extender. Now, as you can see, if we place a lever on this block, which is your input, and give it a flick, you can see we get the double piston extension and also the full double piston retraction. Wonderful. For our next stage in the process, we're going to create the outer edge of our piston door. So we're going to place sea lanterns going up to the top like that and sea lanterns on this side as well, just because I think they look fairly cool. And then we're going to place sea lanterns going right the way across like this just on top of all of those and then in between those sea lanterns we're going to have our white stained glass now the idea behind this one is that when you want to enter the actual testing facility of our laboratory this entire glass wall will lift upwards allowing you to pass on through which i think is very scientific and very cool as well i mean i'd love to have something like that inside my house so that is going to be what our door actually looks like then above that, we're going to have to leave a two block gap. So that's one, two, and then another two blocks. So one, two again, then place a block up like this and place a bunch of regular pistons facing downwards across like this. Now you may notice we've sort of gone out into the landscape right here. We're going to have to do some terraforming and cover this up. But now I've just got to do the full line of double piston extenders all the way across. To wire up your top double piston extender is actually quite a lot simpler. You just want to take out all of these blocks right here and run a line of blocks going across the top like this, placing redstone dust all the way across like that. And then we're going to do another line of blocks just underneath, which we probably should have done first because now we have to place the redstone every now and again. But just two long lines of redstone dust, which are going to be powering all of our pistons. And now we need to connect them up using redstone. So the first thing we're going to do is place a repeater set to three ticks. And then we're going to place some redstone going across like that. And we need to make sure that we actually have a repeater input into this thing. So we're going to place a repeater running across like this, up into this block right here, then redstone dust going into that. Now we have to connect up this circuit into the bottom circuit as well, so that it all functions. I would say this looks like a pretty good spot for our input. So we're going to place a lever on that block. And then out the back, we're going to place in all of our blocks going up like this. So redstone dust right there. And then we're going to use some upside down half slabs and snake our redstone going right the way up to the top into this circuit here. So that is our top double piston extender all connected. Now it is time to do the bottom double piston extender, which is a tiny bit more complicated because you have to use what's known as a falling edge monostable circuit. So you want to place a redstone torch on the side of this block, a dropper facing in this direction with a hopper running back into it. Then we're going to place any old item inside that dropper, take a comparator output from the hopper, and that's going to be running into this block with a repeater, and then a block over here and redstone dust running across like this. So that should be everything connected. Just double check everything is correct. 
make sure that there's no redstone running into something that it shouldn't be. But when we flick this lever, you should see all of these pistons extend. And when we flick it again, we get our full double extension, and that has pushed up our glass window so that we can walk on through. Once again, I've made some pretty serious changes since the previous clip. So the first thing that I've done is I've placed in a quartz ceiling. This is an upside down slab quartz ceiling, which I think looks fairly nice, especially with our iron skirting going around the top. That looks really, very cool. Then of course, we've got our piston door that's in the middle. And then over here, we have got a five block deep section that goes into the back here. Now inside this wall, we've got a bunch of windows and that is because that is where our testing facility is going to be going. Obviously, this is a laboratory. It's a sort of evil laboratory. So we're going to be doing some animal testing in here, which I know is not a very good thing. I'm, I'm pretty against that. But this is an evil science laboratory in Minecraft. So I suppose it's not really affecting anyone. So this is where our evil animal testing is going to be happening. Now it is time to start work on the redstone for it. So the first thing that I want to do is place sea lanterns underneath each one of these windows because it's looking at fairly dark out the back here. Then we're going to chuck in some white stained glass panes just like this, which really just pulls everything in together. I think that looks pretty awesome. And then out the back, we're actually going to create the area for these things. So the first thing you want to do is just place a sticky piston facing in this direction with a block on its face. Now that's going to create the killing chamber basically. So we're going to place those going right the way across like this with blocks on all of their faces. And then up here, we're going to place a block up like this with a dispenser facing in that direction. And once again, we're going to do the same thing all the way across, just over to the other side. And then finally, we're going to place a line of blocks going across the top here, and we're going to have dispensers facing downwards. So a dispenser there, a dispenser there, a dispenser there, and a dispenser right there. Now these are going to be dispensing the potions, these are going to be dispensing the bunnies, and these are going to be killing the bunnies. It works quite well. I've now placed in three buttons on this wall over here, which are going to be connecting up to the various different elements of our circuit. So the first one that we're going to be constructing is the bunny killing circuit, which is going to cause our pistons to retract, and it's going to cause the bunnies to fall into lava, which is a real shame. But as I said earlier on, this is an evil science lab, so that sort of thing needs to happen. And we're going to just run a redstone line all the way across here from this redstone torch, which should cause all of our pistons to extend and that will happen right there. And the piston signal strength is just about long enough to reach the other end. So when we hit this button, all of our pistons will retract at exactly the same time. The next one is just as simple. We wanna place a redstone torch on the back of that button right there with a block up like this and another redstone torch. And then we're going to run the output from that all the way across here and into all of these dispensers. Now you may want to throw in a repeater into this redstone line at some point because it is relatively long, but there is a chance it will actually be long enough. If we quickly test this out by breaking this redstone torch, we should be able to tell, yes, it is in fact long enough. So we can actually leave this be and not have any repeaters inside the circuit. And that is going to cause all of our bunny dispensers to dispense their bunnies. So now what you have to do is fill in these dispensers with your rabbit spawn eggs. If you're playing in survival mode, then unfortunately you won't be able to do this. You're going to have to come up with a system to take the rabbits from your bunny farm down into this area here. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. For the final circuit is a fairly similar story. Redstone torch on the back of the button, a block and then another redstone torch with blocks going right the way across like this. And we're going to want redstone dust on top of all of these blocks. So redstone dust going right the way across here. And then we're going to want to run that into a block with a repeater like this and redstone dust going right the way across like that. And that will power all of our dispensers. So now what you want to do is get any potion that you really fancy. It could be a potion of harming, it could be a potion of leaping, whatever you really want, place it inside these dispensers. And this is going to be our testing facility Pretty much done, at least in terms of the redstone. Time for the final details then. You wanna fill in all of these blocks to make sure that none of the bunnies escape. So just all of these blocks going right the way across here and just make sure that there is no partitions between all of these, just those blocks there. And there we go. So now we've got little cubes for all of our bunnies. And then down at the bottom, we want to place in a gigantic lava lake, which is where all of our done bunnies are going to be dropping down to. Once we've finished with the bunnies, we've done testing on them, we're going to drop them down into the lava. Before you test this thing, there's just one quick thing that I want to mention. I made a slight mistake. You need to break this block right here and replace it with a slab to stop that redstone torch from powering this redstone dust. But that is, believe it or not, your entire redstone circuit done. Your laboratory is now all finished and it should be good to go. So replace all of the blocks that you've broken. It should look something a little bit like this. And if we hit this button over here, we'll get our bunnies dropped down into the system. Then if we hit this button right here, that will dispense the testing facilities. And you can see that 
they are looking very tested on and when we hit this button that will kill off all of the bunnies so there we go ladies and gents that is the testing facility now we can just pop back inside and close off our piston door and go back out to the outside because unfortunately ladies and gents that is all i've got time for today i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please sure to hit that like button and if you really loved it then make sure to subscribe but thanks for watching guys this has been mumbo and i'm out i'll see you later